Hello and welcome to this video tutorial from ComputerGarGar.com and in this video we will look at six ways to speed up your Excel macros. So if you are creating macros or procedures that are quite long winded they can sometimes take quite a bit of time to perform. We want to look at how we can speed those up. Now there are numerous ways that this can be done in improving the functions we create and you know the logic we use etc but we're going to cover six classic things to avoid or to do in this video and we're going to start off with four different settings that you can either change or, or turn off or implement which will make a large difference in your macros now for this example of these four things I have just a large spreadsheet, it's about, is it 19,000? I can't remember. Uh, not quite that big. Just up to 13,000 rows. And there's a loop going through that takes you know, a few seconds to perform. Uh, we're going to look at how we can speed that up. So if I jump to my developer tab and uh, my Visual Basic, this is the uh, basic pretend macro I've got, uh, which goes through various kind of a couple of different loops here to slow it down a little bit and these are the things that you would do now at the top of the kind of procedural macro we're going to add some lines to change or switch off certain features and then at the bottom we're going to change them back or switch them on again so let's start at the top here and then we'll reverse it at the bottom now this is normally quite high up in the macro it's either just after the variable declaration or maybe it's just after some variables are initialized. It'll be quite early on. And it's up to your decision what makes sense. Uh, let's assume that I want it right at the top here. Now the first one to mention is turning off formula calculations. So we could write application. Uh, dot calculation. And then I could put equals Excel calculation manual. So I have turned off automatic calculation in this macro. So every time your macro changes the value in a cell or some kind of activity, Excel will recalculate all the formulas in the sheet. Um, in theory. And a lot of the time that's not necessary. There's no need to do it during the macro. I just want to press a button maybe, trigger the macro, then it finishes. I don't need to see the values changing whilst it's in operation. So that would get switched off. Uh, next up, you have screen updating. Once again, every time it has to switch sheet or move to a cell, um, you know, Excel is going to update the screen. It redraws the screen to show you the progress and what you're doing. But during a macro, you don't really need to see that stuff. So let's put in application dot screen updating. Oh dear, making a right mess with my typing here. At screen updating. equals false. We're going to turn off screen updating. I don't need to see the screen change as the macro progresses. Now I've put a couple of application objects in here so it makes sense at this point before I cover the next two to maybe wrap that in a with construct. I could put with and I could put in end with and then I can move this application word up here and just say, look, with application, uh, you know, the calculation, uh, the screen updating, and then move on to my next one. And that will simplify my code. It will summarize it quite nicely. And the next one I want to mention is displaying what happens on the status bar. So display status bar now what this is 
is, you know, when you're using Excel, let me just switch that off to false. When you're using Excel, if I just jump back uh, to um, Excel right now, you know, if I highlight some cells, right at the bottom of my screen, it's telling me the total and the average. And when you do things like copy and paste, it shows your progress. These are all updates to that bar. But, you know, if my macro is highlighting cells and moving to cells, I don't need it to show me that stuff down there during the macro. So, in our macro, we can turn off the status bar. And the final one for the moment is enable events. Another one that we can switch off because it's not needed or potentially not needed during the macro. That last one may be a little bit more controversial, but the scenario is that whenever you change a value in a cell, or you refresh a pivot table, or you open a file, you know, a event occurs. You know, Excel will trigger the worksheet change event, or the workbook open event, or the refresh pivot table event, and that could trigger your code. You may have macros, you may have code running from those events, and it may be very important. So this one is not necessarily one you want, depending what your macro does and what you do. But if you don't need those macros to run, this is another one to switch off because you don't need those other events being triggered every time a cell is changed or a file is opened and closed and so on. Now those lines would then get copied and they would get pasted, let me try that again, to the bottom of this procedure. And they would be, oh dear, they would be reversed. So I would switch that back to Excel calculation automatic, automatic. I would put screen update in, um, Display status bar and enable events back to true. So they are four very important techniques, things that you can change or switch off, uh, which will make a great difference in your macro. Especially the first two, which are quite well known, the screen updating and turn off formulas. They're the key two with the other two helping as well. Especially if you're creating complex macros, you know, it makes the world a difference. Uh, we're now going to explore two more things that, that is very important that you implement to speed up your macros. So another common mistake is excessive selecting of cells and selecting of sheets during macro code. And this can happen when you write it. You know, you can improve, um, you know, how many statements you write to get a job done and the way... Uh, and the code that you write, but it's very commonly created when you're recording stuff as well. Now, I'm a big fan of recording macros. You know, as, as a VBA tutor and kind of user, you may be surprised to hear that. A lot of people will kind of moan about recording once you have those skills, but it's always a great way of reminding you the kind of code you need or quickly creating it to save you typing it all. So it's always got a use. But it's never going to write the greatest code. It pretty much always needs improving. Classic example will be copy and paste. Let me do that example. If I start up a macro recorder here, and if I just record a macro, let's call it macro one, why not? And if I highlight these cells here, and I take a copy of those cells, and I go to a sheet called two sheet. And maybe I'll click in cell B2, and maybe I'll paste it in there using my home tab here. Paste, and then I'll stop my macro recording. And let's go and have a look at what it did. Right, where we go, module two, here it is. This is what they did to, you know, copy and paste that code. They created it in three different statements, three lines of code. First of all, selecting that range that I did, then taking a copy of it, then going to that sheet, then going to that cell on that sheet, then pasting it. Five different lines. Completely unnecessary. Works, don't get me wrong, but when we're looking at making our code easier to read, 
or the purpose of this video speeding it up, we can do that. So straight away, this line can be put onto one. Instead of selecting it <coughs> and then copying it, just copy it straight away. Why are, we, why are we doing that in two operations? Range A1 to B5.copy. And then, um, after that dot .copy, if I was to type a space, you see with this specific operation, uh, there is a destination argument. So I could just put destination. I don't even need to type destination. But it's probably better code if I do for readability. Colon equals. You always type that when you're using arguments of, of a, a kind of method or function. And um, then I can put in this code. So I could put sheets dot range B2. Don't need that. Don't need paste. And that one line alone should do that job. With range A1 to B5, take a copy and paste it to that destination area. So I'm using copy and paste here as an example that we can all relate to and is a classic way of learning these skills and techniques. But you can apply this to you know almost anything in Excel, how you can shorten the amount of lines you're writing. And by shortening the operations, you're going to speed your macro up. It isn't moving to sheets and selecting cells and all this is unnecessary. Just do what you're doing. Change the cell colour, update the cell, run the formula, or in this case, paste it. So to show this working, if I just come out of that developer and if I just clear all that down on this sheet, it's not there anymore. Let's go over here as well. And on the data tab, uh, let me run that macro. Uh, let's go to view macros uh, the one called macro one let's run it and if we go to the two sheet it's on there uh, but it hasn't had to move sheet and move cells to all, order to do the job it was much faster without that and much easier to read as well okay let's look at our final way of speeding up your macros now in the sixth and final example of what you can do to help speed up your macros, I want to talk about using data in memory and not using the values from uh, your cells and your sheets. So I've got a real basic macro here where it just goes through each of the names in this list looking for the name that is mentioned in sheet 5, cell B3. And when it finds it, puts 10% on top of the amount. And you can see this macro in here. So don't read too much into this example. It's just a demonstration basically of a loop and an if statement and some kind of calculation. And within it, there's constant references to the cells and the sheets. And, you know, it's always going to be more efficient to use data from memory than from the physical, physical worksheets and asking Excel to check those sheets and those cells every single time will certainly take its toll. Uh, so instead of selecting that sheet and then running through the loop using active cell value and offsetting from it, we could use variables. Uh, we could create a variable for the value that is in uh, B3 of sheet 5 instead of having to refer to it in the if statement here and having Excel to keep going back and checking it. And we can also use a variable for the row number instead of using this active cell, uh, like offset to the right, offset down, active cell again, offset to the right, offset down, active cell again, and all this stuff. So right at the top, that's normally where this stuff happens. We could declare a variable quickly uh, for a row number. And I could also declare a variable for uh, the name, uh, so I could put uh, Sal's name, that will do for now, that will be a string. And then, yeah, you know, instead of that, I can uh, put an assignment to that variable, uh, that row number equals 2. So instead of selecting cell A2, I say the current row is 2. And then I'll completely change this around to start relying on that variable. 
Now, if any of you watching this are not too sure about what I'm doing at the moment, you know, depending where your kind of VBA uh, skills are up, they may be far beyond this stuff. Uh, you look at filling things in or or not up to this stuff, uh, then you know please check out my Excel VBA course, which will cover all of this. It will go in depth and it will explain it all in detail. If any of this is a little bit hazy for you, um, but if you know a bit of VBA. You're just looking for improvements. You want to start using data in memory, and you don't want to start using all this active cell stuff. I mean, it certainly does a job, uh, but if you've got a a large macro, it's only going to slow it down even more. So while I'm talking, I'm just quickly changing this around a little bit. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. That is just going to simply be Sal's name. And I'll need to assign to that. Uh, Sal's name equals. I should have copied that before it went. Worksheet sheet five dot range b three dot value. All that stuff and all this sales object can come into here. Lovely jubbly. Row num column two, row num column two, and that should be our alternative. So now we just say, look, the first row number is two, and every time in the link uh, in the loop, sorry, we increment it. Row number three, row number four. I, I assign the value from cell B three sheet five into sales name. So every time the if statement tests it, it just tests that variable. It doesn't keep going back to B3, going back to B3. And instead of all this active cell, like look at the cell, look at the cell, look to the right of the cell, move to the cell below, all this behavior, I'm just using the cells objects and saying, look, for whatever the current row is, column one, whatever the current row is, column two, you know, increase the variable number, now it's row three, you know, and, and so on. And I'm, I'm using this data from memory, which is what variables do, rather than going back to physical uh, sheets, books, cells, etc. And that is going to make a huge difference to the speed uh, and the overall quality and, and readability and efficiency of your macros. I hope you found this video useful. Please check out some of our other video tutorials on our YouTube channel and come check us out at computergargar.com.